A Sydney woman in custody following a shooting that occurred during an altercation with her boyfriend. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. And our top story, an October 7th hearing has been set for a Sydney woman facing charges after a weekend shooting that left her boyfriend injured. On Saturday morning, officers were called to an apartment on Ash Street, finding 38-year-old Kara Driffle applying pressure to an apparent gunshot wound on the abdomen of her 43-year-old boyfriend. The pair had been arguing, and when the boyfriend grabbed a handgun and pointed it at Driffle, a struggle ensued, during which the firearm discharged. Officers said the details surrounding the incident kept changing each time the woman recounted the story and evidence that the scene was not consistent with her accounts of what transpired. Driffle faces two felonies, second-degree assault and possession of a controlled substance, with bond set at $75,000 with a 10% provision. Well, a 15-man crew, including 12 line technicians, one fleet technician, and two supervisors, departed from the York Operations Center Thursday morning and are heading towards Augusta and Savannah, Georgia areas. Once they get closer, they'll coordinate with Georgia Power to identify where they can begin work to restore power. Nebraska Public Power District crews assisting in the mutual aid come from across the state, including from Shadron, Ainsworth, Atkinson, Kearney, Lexington, and Norfolk, among others. And October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and this week the Nebraska State Patrol and other law enforcement agencies join forces to help raise funds for organizations who help those battling cancer. NSP Superintendent Colonel John Bolduck introduced Brandy Preston of the Nebraska Pink Patch Project, who works with agencies to get them pink patches for officers to wear during October. She says this program has grown leaps and bounds since its inception in 2017. Um, it started with just a small number of agencies, about five uh, in 2017. Um, and just a couple of charities. And since then, we have grown to 27 agencies statewide, benefiting about 10 uh, charities across the state. There are more than a dozen agencies participating in this year's event, including the Scottsbluff Police Department. And you can buy pink patches from the law enforcement agencies themselves or other merchandise at nepinkpatchproject.com. Looking for free instead of fees? Platte Valley Bank can help you keep your finances moving forward with no ATM fees. Whether you're headed to the lake, the mountains, or just to the grocery store, you can enjoy the freedom of free ATM access anywhere, anytime. Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. When it comes to your health, you deserve the very best. At Morrill County Community Hospital, they provide top-notch care with compassion and expertise. From routine checkups to advanced surgeries, their dedicated team is here for you 24-7. With state-of-the-art technology and a patient-first approach, they ensure you and your loved ones receive the highest quality care. Because at Morrill County Community Hospital, your health is their priority. Visit Morrill County Community Hospital today in Bridgeport. Morrill County Community Hospital. Exceptional care right here at home. Fly United Airlines operated by SkyWest with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. United is dedicated to going the extra mile for you with daily flights to and from Denver along with a commitment to excellent service. Reserve your flight today and remember United miles can be earned and redeemed with your flights. While at the airport, stop and enjoy authentic Italian food at Roma Italian Restaurant. Plus, Hertz Thrifty Car Rental is there for your car rental needs. Make life easier, relax, and get on board with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. I'm Jason Jorgensen. It is once again time for Husker Chat as we talk Husker football with Sean Callahan of Husker Online. Nebraska coming off a uh, disjointed win at Purdue, but they uh, got the victory last Saturday over the Boilermakers. Sean, how was that trip, and, and what was the mood like of the Nebraska contingent about halfway through the third quarter? That, that thing was looking pretty dicey for a while. You know, it was a great trip in the sense we avoided hurricane weather. <laughs> 
flights were on time. Uh, it, 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 it was as smooth as a trip as you're going to get to go out to West Lafayette. So that was good. Uh, but yeah, the game, you were a little on edge there at halftime. I, mean, I don't know if I've been a part of a game with two block field goals at a half and another, another miss. And, you know, the, the lack of third down conversions, they didn't convert a third down in the first half of that game. But everything about it felt like Nebraska should be up by 20 points. and They couldn't get any points on the board. Luckily, they got it all put together. And, you know, Dylan Riola is such a difference maker. Just the throws that he can make, uh, the vision that he has to go through his progressions. Eventually, that won out, and, and they were able to kind of bust the door down and get 28 second-half points. He was pretty good from day one, but in, in watching him play in the early portion of this uh, season, what's what's improved you the most, and where do you think he continues to get better? His ability to read coverages, um, man versus zone, finding matchups, getting the ball down. I mean, drawing six pass interference penalties. Nebraska had eight penalties by first or eight first downs by via by penalty. That was a school record. Uh, the previous record in a game had been six. Um, so just the ability to draw those kind of their hidden yardage things that you don't really see. But, you know, second and 20, third and 20, I don't think I've ever seen a quarterback at Nebraska where you're not as, you know, you're not worried about it because he has the ability to get the ball down the field and make those throws. And you saw him do it a couple times again. And that changes a football game when you can convert a second and 20, third and 20 type play. And he's probably done it five or six times this year, which has been huge. What's your uh, overall, as you take a, a team look here at the Huskers, what's what's your top concern? Where, where do you think Nebraska has to get better? Well, I think the the special teams is the biggest thing because these games are so tight and you're not, you're not going to always score touchdowns. I, I think for Nebraska, um, you know, being able to get points in the kicking game is a real important part of it. And uh, they've got to be able to get that part ironed out because we know a lot of these games are going to hinge on, you know, one possession type situations. And, uh, what we saw at Purdue with the two block kicks, that will get you beat in a lot of Big Ten football games, and, and they can't afford to have those. I, mean, I think this defense, we know what they are. They're they're opportunistic. They're physical. And, you know, they had they had a rough second half against Illinois, but other than that, they've been solid all year. Dylan Riola, we know who he is. I think this offensive line, they've done a great job of overcoming injuries. Um, so there's a lot to like about this team, um, but, you know, the the, the – the details and the little things, especially on special teams, will really matter. How about the schedule when the year started? Folks, that looked pretty favorable for Nebraska to get off to a really good start. But as this season is starting to progress, some of these teams that are on the schedule here the next couple of weeks have maybe been a little bit better than a lot of people thought they might be. Yeah, Rutgers right now has their best team they've had since they've joined the Big Ten. They're on the verge of being ranked. They're 4-0. Then in a few weeks after the bye week, Nebraska will travel to Indiana. They have their best team since the 1950s in terms of record right now, and they're they're ranked. So I I think when you look at just how this has played out, it's been very unpredictable because on the flip side, Wisconsin's not ranked, and, and we're used to seeing them as a ranked team. UCLA is down right now. So there's just been some trading of places on the schedule of teams that you would expect to be tougher opponents where – teams that haven't really been a factor are a factor right now and and it's going to be challenging but i think it will get nebraska up for it too like they're not obviously looking by northwestern and you know or excuse me um rutgers and when they go out to indiana that's going to be a hostile environment i mean that, that, that could easily be a big noon kickoff game in a couple of weeks out there um with both teams being where they're at right now Today on Husker Chat, we're talking with Sean Callahan, Sean Callahan of Husker Online as we preview the Nebraska Rutgers matchup. You know, before the season started at Big Ten uh, Media Days, uh, Greg Schiano, and, and I've always liked him. I, I thought he's done a, a great job there in both, uh, both tenures there. But he, he tried to tell people they were going to be uh, a pretty good football team, and, and so far they have. And, boy, they have to have a ton of momentum coming into this one off of that big Friday night win over Washington. Well, people forget they won their bowl game against Miami in the pinstripe bowl. And, and that was a big moment for their program um, to beat Miami because Miami on paper theoretically has higher ranked players than they did. And they, they kicked their butt up front. And, you know, it was just kind of an old fashioned New Jersey alley beating. And that's exactly how Greg Schiano wants to play. Um, they, they don't, they don't want it to be a pretty game. They want it to be kind of gritty and tough. And Kyle Monagai, their running back, um, gets 25 carries a game. You know what they're going to do. 
They, they put Caliamontis in very manageable situations, and he doesn't try to win the game on his own. He just manages the game, gets first downs. They eat up clock, and that will be the key. And, and, and they've had the schedule to get to this point, too. Um, you know, the, the Virginia Tech win was big. I think that was kind of the swing game. If they won that game, you're like, you know, Rutgers could easily be an 8-9 win team. They are the only team in the conference that doesn't play Ohio State, Michigan, Iowa, Penn State, and Oregon. They avoided all five of the preseason favorites in the Big Ten this year. So they have an unbelievable schedule opportunity, which usually a team like Rutgers, for whatever reason, gets everybody because it's just how it works. I mean, the, the, the teams that don't have the great brand typically draw all the good teams. And, and for whatever reason, Rutgers drew none of the good teams this year, and they've been able to take advantage of it. And even getting Washington on a Friday night, yes, Washington's still a very good team, but they lost their whole roster over the off season and, and they were able to get that win on Friday night. How big of a threat do you think this is to, to Nebraska? They're, they're obviously going to have to play better than they had in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's going to be hot, um, 93 degrees. So I, I, this might be one of those games where that, that uh, new West sideline is going to really come into play for the Huskers with Rutgers on the East, kind of like last year's Michigan game when it was in the mid nineties. Um, so you hope that the weather and the heat, you know, help Nebraska a little bit in this game. Uh, they got to get off the field. I, I still like this matchup for Nebraska. I, I don't think Rutgers is as good as Illinois. I think they're a quality team, but in my opinion, Illinois is a lot better than we realized. I mean, they, they were driving 14 to seven in the fourth quarter with a chance to tie Penn State before they threw a pick six. So the Illinois, you know, as tough as that night was, I think we're learning that's not a bad team that Nebraska lost to either. All right, Sean, we appreciate your insights. We'll see how it develops on Saturday afternoon. Okay, hey, thanks, Jason. That was Sean Callahan of Husker Online joining us for Husker Chat. Once again, we are here every week for Husker Chat. I'm Jason Jordan. Welcome to Kelly's Liquor, your liquor cabinet. Whether you're a wine enthusiast, a whiskey sommelier, a tequila connoisseur, or you just love your beer, Kelly's has the best selection of what you're looking for. Family owned and operated since 1946 and right on 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Come see us today at Kelly's Liquor, your liquor cabinet. And remember to be a good neighbor. Don't drink and drive. Kelly's Liquor, West 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. I imagined retirement in a place where we could enjoy our golden years, where adventure and friendship are the only items on the schedule. The Garden Homes at Northfield gives us the luxury we planned for and peace of mind when it comes to convenience, safety, and comfort. We never have to stop and think about the day-to-day -day upkeep. We love to explore abroad, but most importantly in our backyard. So much to do, so much to see. Here at Northfield, we get the protection of life care, incredible tax benefits, and secured rates for aging services. It's peaceful, knowing that if our needs change, we'll be taken care of. And most importantly, that our kids will never have to make any tough decisions. There never seemed to be enough time to do all the things we wanted. Now we get to focus our energy on enjoying what this community has to offer. At the Garden Homes, life is ours again. A place we had dreamed about. A chance to focus on us. Now the latest from the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. Scotts Bluff Body and Paint, you're driving home our reputation. It calls for a standalone preview here for your Friday. It's high school football tonight with Gehring at Scotts Bluff. We'll take it one head coach at a time after a couple of coaches office stops earlier this week to get the lowdown on the big game coming up this evening. Let's start with the visitors and Gehring head coach Danny O'Boyle. The last time Gehring won a game over Scotts Bluff, Coach O'Boyle was a player for the Bulldogs. That was back in 2009. Now he's in charge of a team that he says has plenty of confidence heading into tonight. 
Well, just the body language that our guys, um, you know, they carry around. You know, the, even after, a, you know, a tough loss last week, um, these guys have come out, you know, in practice, and, and they're ready to get after it every single day. Um, that's kind of been the biggest thing that I've seen with this group, you know, compared to years past is these guys really do, you know, they come every day to practice ready to bring it. And, um, you know, they understand the importance of it and taking those reps. Um, but these guys believe in each other. That That's that's kind of the biggest thing is that they know when it gets tough, um, they can kind of fall back on each other and they can rely on each other um, to pick them up or, or to, you know, if somebody's struggling, then the next guy's going to come. He's going to do a little bit more just to help them out. So that's uh, been really cool to see. But I think overall just the body language that these guys carry. Right now, Gehring is tied for sixth in Class B power points, 4-1 record, and tracking towards a playoff appearance. Big picture for tonight, though, the Bulldogs not much to lose going on the road to play their arch rival. Yeah, um, you know, we've talked a lot about our goals as a team, and, um, you know, each week we reflect on, on where we're at, and, uh, you know, our goal was not just to beat Scott's Bluff, you know, for this season. Um, so we've still got everything ahead of us. Um, I'm certainly glad that this is a Week 6 game uh, rather than a Week 9 game. You know, because like you mentioned, it uh, in the grand scheme of things, you know, this is another opponent that we have to play. Um, you know, whichever side we come out on, it, it shouldn't uh, shouldn't affect us too much in terms of what our goals are. We still have um, three more games, or excuse me, four more games to play after this week, um, and uh, you know, we still have everything in front of us after this week. As for some keys in this one for the visiting Bulldogs, coach highlighted some things on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, definitely. Anytime you play an offense like this, um, you have to be able to get off the field on third downs, and you do that by winning on first and second down. You know, we, we've got to try to keep them in second and seven, second and eight, um, rather than second and two or second and three. You know, and, and third downs, we, you know, we need to be around the third and four, third and five range rather than being third and one or third and two because obviously um, with their offense, you know, they're so downhill and get so many blockers to the point of attack that – um, you know, if you give them those short yardage situations, they're going to win those a lot of the time. So just being able to get them backed up and try to get them to throw the ball a little bit, um, that's going to be key for our defense. Now let's get to the Scotts Bluff Bearcats. It's been an odd start to the year, really, to this point. They've got the record at 4-1, and one, but the combined record of the teams they beat is just 1-19. So tonight's game shaping up as a big power points game as they start to project towards the playoffs. Their record is, is good. They've got a lot of great athletes on that side of the, on that side, uh, of the football, on both sides of the football over there. Um, so we just have to prepare um, for, a, for a district championship game. That's kind of the way we've been approaching it. Um, each and every week over these next three weeks is a district championship game. That's the message that we're sending to our kids. Um, so hopefully they're, they're taking that to heart and hopefully they're preparing themselves uh, the right way. Scott's Bluff has won 14 straight games over Gehring and the average margin of victory in that stretch has been about 32 points. But Coach Hall says this is a different Bulldog squad this year with plenty of skill, kids and speed really standing out. It is. We have to you know, play alignment and assignment football on defense. You gotta, gotta know where we're supposed to be at at all times. Um, get ourselves in a spot to try and take away some of what they want to do um, pre-snap. Um, so that's, that's been a big focus this week and uh, I think our kids are doing a great job so far. Homecoming week can bring plenty of distractions along with it, but with game day here, the recipe for success will of course start up front and that running game and the head coach would also like to see one thing in particular. Yeah, we got to always find a way to start fast. You know, that's kind of been the message for the last three weeks. Um, two of them been on the road. So we want to find a way to start fast um, and then, uh, then just kind of keep that momentum going. But we can't get behind the eight ball early. Uh, got to avoid those big plays early, um, start fast, and, and get, the, get the momentum on our side right away. It's week six, a matchup of four and one teams. It's homecoming at Bearcat Stadium. It's gearing at Scott's Bluff. Broadcast tonight on 107.3 The Trail. That'll start at 6.30. That is the latest today from right here at the Scott's Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. October is Renewal by Anderson's United Against Cancer campaign, and when Renewal offered to pay for employees' radon testing and mitigation, several Renewal team members found radon in their homes. Deb was one of them, and she always wondered how she got breast cancer. Radon causes cancer. It's linked to Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. Radon is a killer. People don't know about radon. They don't know that what a killer it is, and they don't know how cheap it is to have it tested. From all of us at Renewal by Anderson, please get a radon test now. It could save your life. You deserve to have a building that will last for generations. 
With more than 110 years of experience and thousands of satisfied customers, Morton Buildings is the industry leader you can trust. If you're planning for a garage, farm shop, horse barn, storage building for your RV, boat, or collectibles, there's no better time to buy. Contact your local Morton sales office or visit mortonbuildings.com to get started today. calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. Tri-City Stormwater presents Stormwater 101, an illicit discharge. Tired of feeling stuck? Not sure if you are on the right track? Platte Valley Bank can help keep your finances moving forward with checking account options to fit your lifestyle and an online account chooser to make finding the right account easy. Control your financial future with helpful budgeting tools and automatic savings plans. Now is the time to enjoy the ride with Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. 
And finally tonight, the public is invited to take part in an event this weekend to raise awareness about efforts to prevent suicide in our communities. The Scotts Bluff Out of the Darkness Community Walk takes place Sunday at the YMCA Trails West Camp in Scotts Bluff. Organizer Angela Diedrich says the walk gets underway starting at noon. And so we're just hoping to get as many people there as possible. And at the event, um, you can just show up, but we also like for people to create teams. And those teams can be in memory of someone. They can be, for whatever reason, it can be like a football team from a high school. And when you sign up, you can also say like how your, what your thoughts are about it. If you know someone you've lost, if you struggle yourself, um, and when you get there, we give beads away um, that signify how you relate to the issue. We have some speakers, and then mm -hmm. we just all walk together just to show support. Diedrich says the event can provide a boost of support for those who have been impacted by suicide or may perhaps be going through suicide ideation. You can register for the walk at the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention at afsp.org slash scotchbluff. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday.